But this is about as close as officials are letting us get right now. You here in Hampstead, we're seeing about a half inch of some fluffy white snow out here really only hitting the exposed grassy areas in parts of Pender County. If we walk around this way, though, what you're going to see is that the roadways are clear. These aren't my feet you're looking at, but some big burly men here in downtown Wilmington rocking teal heels. And just to give you an idea of how much rain we were seeing earlier, this is my rain boot. I haven't taken it off. I haven't dumped it out since earlier, and this is how much water is in it right now take a walk over here. We are just feet from Williston Middle School, Gregory Elementary, and what officials have said right now is that they aren't expecting this shooting scene to affect school opening times. The family of Lynn and Lacey and the community here in Bladenboro are leaving the First Baptist Church yet again without answers as to what happened to the teen. About 100 or so people filling these pews. The distribution truck here at JCPenney just arrived. You can see they have clothes hanging up, tons of boxes. The staff here very early this morning. I just wanted to address on Facebook, we've had a few comments about our location for this live shot, but we're actually one of the best places to really tell this story because the real problem here are these merging points onto US 74. Well, John, you mentioned some of those areas were still smoldering and behind us. We've been keeping an eye on this area just behind Heirloom Drive. We've seen a few areas flare up again, but officials say you don't need to be too concerned right now because those flames are still contained within the fire lines that the Forestry Service was able to draw around this 500 acre burn area in Brunswick County. We know at least three homes were damaged, including this one here off of Heirloom Drive. The vinyl siding just melted off by the heat. The next steps now are figuring out what caused this fire. A situation that could have turned out a lot worse. There weren't any huge problems. Um, you know, they didn't, they didn't throw us some, some real big curveballs um, like it could have. I mean, if it had come up to the housing development, you know, 30 minutes earlier, then yeah, we would have yeah, it would have been ugly. That's how officials are describing a fire that swept through 500 acres of woods in Leland. They were hitting hot spots and um, where there was, you know, right near the houses and whatnot, you know, they can get pinpoint accurate. Helicopters worked from above as tractors dug out fire lines to contain the flames. Aircraft can slow a fire down, but until you get lines on it, that's what's going to put the fire out. Even before officials called for evacuations off Butler Road, some families were already preparing for the worst. It's more important to get the family and the pets, get all them out of the house, and that's what, that's all we were thinking. Evacuations have since been lifted, families returning to their homes tonight, some of them finding damage left behind by the blaze. The Forestry Service will stay on scene watching for hot spots and trying to figure out just what sparked these flames. We've removed all of the, the organic material, the grasses, the leaves that can burn and carry a fire. Not only working against the fire, but battling the wind as well. With the wind changing direction so much, it kept pushing the fire in different directions, so it kept shifting. So that was a little bit of a challenge, but this is fire season and that's what we're used to. While the threat's now over with the fire contained, officials are sending out a warning to residents to be cautious this fire season. In with the green grass, there's still a lot of dry brown grass from the winter, and unfortunately that's what's gonna carry your fire. So if you are gonna burn, we'd ask you to be cautious, have a garden hose out there, and stay with it while you're burning. And John and Fran, the smell of smoke is still very apparent here in Brunswick County at this hour. Even though the fires contained, officials with the Forestry Service say they will have somebody on hand throughout the night to just make sure there's a presence here in this area in case there are any flare-ups that get outside of those fire lines. Fran, these days Mount Misery Road is not only crowded with traffic, but dump trucks as well. And you don't have to be out there for longer than five minutes to see at least 10 pass by. Many people who live along this road say something needs to change before tragedy strikes. Now I see why they call it Mount Misery Road. It's pretty miserable right now. Tina Perez travels Mount Misery Road every day. She says in the past six months, it's grown more and more crowded by dump trucks working on the new I-140 bypass. Every five seconds, it's constant. It's constant. She says her concern really started after a few recent incidents. One of the dump trucks almost barreling into her husband's car, leaving behind skid marks on the road and a trail of tire tracks in the grass. It's scary. I mean, you have to leave your house and you have to go places, but you just have to be really extra careful. 
you know, and be a defensive driver pretty much to avoid it. Now she wants to see something done, contacting the highway patrol to see if the presence of troopers in the area would help slow down the traffic. What's going to happen is going to be a tragedy. Something bad is going to happen before they really do something about it. So if they want to prevent that, they just need to go ahead and patrol the area. Now, Tina says she's also concerned about school buses making frequent stops along that road and those dump trucks not being able to slow down in time to avoid them. I also spoke with officials with the Highway Patrol. They say they've responded to numerous reports over the past year and a half stemming from that construction in the area and the dump trucks running up and down Mount Misery Road. A brewery boom is happening here on the streets of the port city with a number of businesses opening their doors in just the past year and more expected in the months to come. But these brewing businesses are all about science and getting the right ingredients for the perfect pour. It's a great time to be a craft beer lover. Business is booming with craft beer pouring through the port city much like the Cape Fear River. You get that kind of twinkle in your eye and you hope that you can turn your hobby, hobby into a career. Local brewers say they're living the dream helping build what has become an industry in Wilmington. You know, people really enjoy a lot more flavor these days. They're not drinking just, you know, watered down beer at the beach anymore. There's a wide range of flavors now in beer. From the simple to the unique. This is uh, Benford's Oyster Stout out of uh, Lancaster, South Carolina. For the general population um, that aren't quite familiar with the craft beer, they might think this is a little uh, off the wall of brewing a beer with oysters. <laughs> Brewers are working on that perfect pour that will turn consumers in Wilmington away from the Budweiser's of the world to something a little more homegrown. But as far as small businesses, you can't get any smaller than having a brewer and his wife spending 80 hours a week putting their hard-earned dollars and their efforts into creating a product that their customers or local living down the block can appreciate. That's about as local as you can get. You're talking about making the, the best beer you can. Not just making beer to sell it, but making beer that you like, and that you enjoy. But building these brews? Extracting the sugars out of grain, and then fermenting that sugar water into alcohol. That's the simplistic way. Hasn't come without its challenges. City leaders had to look at policies and change them to help brewers like Barry Owings at Broomtail open their doors. We played our small part in that, but we're glad to support that type of industry and that small business owner that is doing that kind of business here in our community. Brewers have also had to educate consumers about how to drink their products. Some of the ones I've shown you are, you know, 8, 9, 10 plus ABV, and no, you don't want to drink a six-pack of those. Um, if you do, it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting evening uh, for yourself. Cheers! And teach their taste buds to appreciate the craft. It's definitely an acquired taste. When people taste it, in many cases, they're going to like it, even if it overpowers their palate the first time they taste it. But the work they put in is paid off, with breweries not just popping up here in Wilmington, but across New Hanover County and other parts of southeastern North Carolina. And really, it's the entire Tar Heel state that's cashing in on the craft beer scene right now. Beer bloggers writing about North Carolina as one of the up and coming locations for craft beer lovers. And Asheville really taking the title for Beer City USA. But many would argue that Wilmington is well on its way to becoming the new capital for craft beer here in our state. Live in downtown Wilmington this morning, Caitlin Stansel for Carolina in the Morning.